get the mind state. I am a big believer that you're in control of how you improve your mental state if you take the time to really work on it. Have you ever felt so overwhelmed you wanted to scream, or so caught up in your head while at work that you couldn't focus on your task at hand? Or unable to finish an assignment because you were too stressed to focus? Well, I have the um, cure for you. Today, I want to explain to you the benefits of meditation and how it can help you in your everyday life. Meditation refers to any family of practices in which practitioners train their minds to self-induce a mode of consciousness to realize benefits. I've been researching this topic for a couple of weeks, of weeks and I myself have um, about a little over a year's experience of meditating. I'm sure that all of you can relate to feelings of stress or anxiety. Being a student and working full time, you can be overwhelmed. Not to mention you have other priorities with your friends and family, or just interests and hobbies you'd like to get to. We all lead crazy lives. Today, I will discuss the physiological benefits and the psychological benefits of meditating as well as give you a quick tip and show you the proper ways to meditate. The first thing I would like to discuss are the physiological benefits of meditation. Meditating is a natural cure for the, is a natural cure to many physiological problems without you, the use of medicine and can reduce the need for medical care. Meditating is good for people with high blood pressure because it increases blood flow and slows the heart rate. It reduces anxiety attacks by lowering the blood lactate level, and it leads people to a deeper level of physical relaxation, which is really beneficial to athletes and people who are very active, because it's a proper way to really relax and wind down. It helps cure headaches and migraines, because it clears out negative energy in your mind, and meditation also prevents and controls the pain of chronic disease. Now that we've discussed some physiological benefits of meditating, I'd like to share some psychological benefits which I believe the psychological benefits are a little more important than some of the physical. The physiological or psychological benefits are overwhelming, and through my research I have found that many psychologists, sociologists, and medical es experts are doing an immense, amount, an immense amount of research on this topic. Meditating is not just a religious practice or for spiritual release, but has actual medical benefits, and they soon be a respected medical practice. Meditation can help build self-confidence by resolving phobias and fears that continue to trouble you because you can help learn to control your thoughts and release problems that you hold on to. It helps one to develop an emotional maturity and will help you give up petty issues, things that might have really bothered you if you really spend a lot of time focusing to go over them, it can help you. It helps people be focused and concentrate better by increasing bravely coherence that's improving your ability to learn and it can also help with your memory. And the most important benefit, I believe, is that it really helps with stress. As all people know, stress is like a silent killer. There's so many people who focus on eating well, working out, but you can do all of those things and if you're overwhelmed with stress, it takes a day off of your life, like, all the time. It's not good for you. In an article I read in Psychology Today, Dr. John Kvatzin, he's a PhD and he studies at the University of Massachusetts, he took a group of people from a high-tech firm, so they were very stressed out job and busy in their work and really stressed out. He split them into two groups. 25 of the people were taught meditating over an eight-week course, and the other 16 were a control group and just left to their normal lives. Their brain waves were, um, they, sorry. Their brain waves were scanned regularly, and the researchers found a profound shift in activity in the, front, in the left frontal lobe of the people who are meditating. For those of you who don't know, don't know, a lot of your stress is located in the right frontal lobe of your brain, and the people who are meditating, their activity shifted over to their left lobe, and they were found to be a lot calmer and happier. In an article I all right, now that I've discussed some of the physiological and psychological benefits, I'd like to discuss how to meditate in the proper ways too. In an article I read in an ABC News article, it showed that 20 million Americans practice meditation. <clears throat> um, one of the best things about meditation is it's free, it requires no special equipment, and it's not hard to learn or time consuming. It can be practiced anywhere that you like. When you're first learning to meditate, it's best that you pick a calm area that's quiet because you'll be distracted. 
once you've gotten it down, you could meditate anywhere. You meditate in the campus of school, you can go to the library, find a quiet place, and it's really good because when you're overwhelmed with stress or you need to clear your thoughts before your next class because you have a test coming up, it could be very beneficial. All you have to do is close your eyes, find a calm, quiet place, and sit, and naturally just breathe. You're going to focus on your breathing and slip into a state of calm and let your feelings and focus, focus on your feelings and thought and let them go. Don't try to attach to one feeling for too long. It's a lot about like letting everything just flow through your brain, your brain so you can calm down. It should only take about 20 to 15 minutes, and when you first start, it's not going to be something right away that you're going to notice that you do well at it, or that you're maybe even really, you might even not feel like after the 20 minutes of sitting there you did anything. But if you take the time like anything, you really will notice the benefits from it and be a lot less stressed out. Alright, today I have discussed the physiological, psychological benefits of meditating, as well as given a brief lesson in how to meditate. References to meditation date back to 500 BC. And the fact that it's still practiced around the world speaks for itself. Best of all, meditation has no negative side effects, and there's nothing but positive to be gained from it. With such a huge list of benefits, it's easy to see why meditating continues to grow in popularity. Katrina, I didn't get the time on that. What was it? Uh, it was the time? Yes. It was, she had a minute and 34 seconds. Okay. That's fine. So, Lucy, what did you think? I, um, I really liked the beginning with the Abraham Lincoln, and I like how she led up with the the second slide stop, stop stressing, and it was really clear what she was going to talk about, and it was meditation. Um, I really liked her personal experience, how she um, can relate to it and stuff. She had a very clear thesis, and she, she was really good at her transition, a little stumble towards the end. Um, she had a very good explanation for meditation and what it does for your body, and um, yeah. It, all okay. Well, I like I like the quote that you start with. I don't think you need the slide with the quote on it. That doesn't really add anything to it. Uh, but I like the way that you use the subsequent slides, basically as transitions and signposts. You know, this is we're moving to another subject. Uh, you know, here's a reminder that we've moved to something else. It doesn't contain a lot of information, but it does tell us. You know, that there is a structure that's going on there. And the other thing about it is that most of them are reflective of the subject that you're talking about. They, they, you know, they in essence, uh, suggest you know, meditative kinds of thinking or images. And uh, you know, the colors work well with that. So I thought, even though it doesn't seem to have a lot of visual material that explains anything, what there was functioned pretty well. Uh, the one thing that jumped out at me when you talked about the one study and they were looking at the brain waves, I thought, I wonder if there are any images of the brain waves from that study. That would have been something that maybe could have been added to the presentation. I was a little concerned because on the first couple of points it really felt like you're giving us a lot of claims about meditation without as much proof. Then uh, right about the midpoint there you make uh, reference to um, the Psychology Today article and the study that was being done and then there was a little bit more uh, citation of material after that and I thought uh, that was uh, you know, adds to the speech. Like I said I was concerned because there's a lot of stuff that you're saying all these benefits exist and I'm going well how do you know that? This this is just something that you're saying. I don't have any reason to believe that uh, up until that point. Then I thought you gave us a little bit more information on that, and that was helpful. You, you would do a very nice job speaking to the audience. You're looking at us for the most part. Uh, you project really well. You speak very naturally. You're not over-dependent on the script, so all the delivery things are fine. And I like the summary a lot. I thought the summary was really strong, reminding us what we were supposed to get from the speech, and you had a good exit line. All right? Thank you. <laughs>